having him as a teammate, how was that formative in your career? And just the defensive challenge of going up against a guy like him, um, what does it take to stop him? Um, well, I think it was, uh, it was like five questions. Um, I think it was great. Um, definitely learned a lot from Kyrie while he was here. Um, and it's been great to, to, to see his journey. Um, to see where he's at, all the stuff that he's going through, um, and stuff like that to be where he's at. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's dope to see. Um, how to stop him? Um, that's, a, that's a great player over there. So it's going to be a full team effort, him and Luca, uh, making sure that we're alert, uh, making sure that we're back in transition, and, uh, and, and do the best we can. Benny, towards the back, right? Jay, Ben's good with Yahoo Sports. Two years ago, doesn't seem like a long time ago, but in basketball world, it can be forever. How are you guys a different team? How are you a different person and player from 22 when you guys were in the finals the first time? Yeah, you, you learn and grow from your experiences, from being a 25-year-old to being a 27-year-old is a, a big difference. Um, yeah, I'm 27. Um, and you, you learn from those experiences. We got a different team. We got a different coach, um, too, as well. You know, now we got Ime Yudoka. Now we got Joe Mazzula. Um, we had Marcus Smart, Rob Williams. Now we got Drew Holiday and Christos Porzingis. We got a different team, different coach. Two years later makes a, a pretty big difference. Yeah. Michael, third row in the middle. Michael Pina, the ringer, uh, Jalen right here. Um, what does uh, Brad Stevens mean to you, and what does he mean to this organization as just someone who's been here for over a decade now? I think Brad has been great in his role um, as GM. He was a great coach, and I think he just um, continued that by just being a, a great GM, being able to put the right pieces together um, and, and things like that. And, and it's happy for him is that his schedule has been able to to settle out, probably putting a little bit less stress on him than uh, we we did when we when, we were, when he was coaching us. Um, but but you no, know, Brad has been Brad has been great since he's been a part of the Boston organization. Um, he's helped you know bring this organization back in terms of winning, and has now you know been able to move into that GM position and, and put the right pieces together to get us back to the finals. On your right in the aisle, Mark. Jalen, uh, back here in the back right, <clears throat> uh, markdomicoceltics.com. Jason was just asked about looking back on that 22 finals as well, and he said, when I do look back on it, I I'm just curious, how often did you look back on it and watch those tapes? Some people choose to flush it down the toilet and move forward. Some people choose to look back and learn from it on film. How often do you go back and watch that experience? How often? I've watched it a few times now, maybe like three or four times. Um, as well as last year's conference finals. I think you can always learn from, you know, um, from anything, really. But um, just being able to watch those moments, you know, and learn from them, like how to manage your emotions and, and like, what you would have did differently, potentially. Um, I don't think that's bad to, to, to look at and, and, and acknowledge and be aware of. So, you know, I would say, you know, a few times at least, I've watched, you know, the finals, the whole thing, all the way through. Nicholas, second row here on the left. Hey there, Jalen. Uh, Nick Galley, Field Level Media. You mentioned brand new team, brand new coach compared to the 2022 finals run. How has Joe's kind of approach just throughout the playoffs and here in the finals been different from Emay's? Um, you know, just two different people. So, you know, um, two different guys. Joe is is has got his own style. Eme had his own style. Both were great coaches, um, but Joe has been able to just emphasize, you know, uh, what uh, what we wanted to be offensively. And I, we 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 were with Joe for a little bit longer. Joe had like the interim year, and now this is his second year in a sense. He may only had one year, um, and you know, so it's hard to really compare and contrast, to be honest. Shane from the front. Jalen, Shane Allen, Forbes Sports. Everyone kind of points to Derek's defense uh, first when they talk about him as a player, but 
offensively, what can you say about his decision making and uh, the ability to set ball screens and make plays out of that? Yeah, I mean, Dwight has been great all season long. Um, he's been aggressive. We've emp we've empowered him. I um, mean, he's he's primed for these moments. Um, we want him to come out and, and um, recognize when uh, it's his time to, to strike, and we feel comfortable with him doing so because he's been doing it all season long. Gary, that's rough. Jalen, Gary Walsh from Boston Globe. I asked Jason earlier about being one of the more scrutinized players uh, in the postseason, and you can relate to that. You've been scrutinized throughout your career. Do you guys, does that bond you together? Does that bring you together? Do you guys talk about that? Do you joke about that? And how does that uh, affect, like, your mental mentality, your focus? You know, are you not as friendly? Does it affect you at all when you when you hear things? And how do you kind of take that into this moment where it's the biggest stage? I think it's fair. I think it's a fair question. And I think it's fair to say that it does affect you, you know, being embraced versus being scrutinized. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes is like, um, the child who isn't embraced um, by the village or something like that, you will, will what is it? So Y'all know this quote, right? No? You will feel like the warmth, the, the child doesn't feel the warmth of the village will like burn, will, will burn it, will burn it down or something like that. Um, yeah, whatever. It's, <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, but, you know, referencing that, it means like, you know, you get to a point where it's like, you know, you get scrutinized enough for uh, a large part of your career and just, it becomes normal. Um, and then you just, it just rolls off you. Um, for me, at least, I could say, I don't know if Jason feels the same way. It's kind of been that my whole career, um, in a sense. You know, just just being booed when you were drafted, to um, saying you were overpaid, and then saying you overpaid again, um, it's been it's been that the whole journey um, for me. So you know, you just it just becomes another headline. Bob, last question here on the left. Hey, Jason, Bob, Bob Strong. Um, again, going back, piggyback on Gary's question. Um, you have your journey has involved a lot. In the beginning, you were coming off the bench and was fighting for playing time. It goes back that far, but and I know how Joe focuses on you guys focusing on the emotion. Excuse me, on the moment. But do you? How do you frame the legacy of this group um, in terms of winning a championship? Uh, one of the guys asked about it being special as a Celtic, but um, it also has to do with you guys as a group. Um, and I think uh, that's a great question as well. And I think this is a special group. Um, I, I really do. The core group of it has been here for a few years now. Um, we've been able to go through the experiences um, of, you know, having success but not having success at the same time. So I think that, uh, you know, to solidify it, you know, the ultimate goal is to get over the hump and win. And I think that'll add a lot to our legacy. But as of right now, I mean, that story is still kind of untold. Thank you, Jen.